If he's going to also eliminate a lot of beneficial grains, I would just wanna be on the lookout to ensure he's meeting his needs for things like vitamin B12 and iron. So when looking for- B12 doesn't come from like wheat. <laughs> like, what's <laughs> this is this whole video is stupid. So recently, YouTube dietitian Abby Sharp critiqued Travis Barker's vegan diet. Let's see what this vegan nutritionist makes of her critique. Today's video is sponsored by Built Bar, and we'll be reviewing. Why? Why would a dietitian be sponsored by processed crap, by a junk food? Okay, yeah, as a bodybuilder, I'll use one or two servings judiciously of a more processed uh, protein product. But, you know, I wouldn't prescribe that for the masses. I certainly wouldn't be promoting that like front and center. And if I did, I would be caveating it. I would be saying, if you're not a strength or physique athlete, you don't need this. It's not as helpful as the whole plant foods which you're displacing. And, you know, just refined protein like that. Yeah, if you're trying to build muscle, great. But, you know, for someone like, like Abby or for the vast majority of our audience, you know, it's probably going to be doing more harm than good. Like, eat real food. That should be the, the message. Like, why is she doing that? Well, the reason she's doing that is you can't make money off of, like, broccoli and stuff. So, you know, but I would be putting in a caveat. I would. I, and I find it a bit, I find it very wrong. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor, Bill Bar. I can't stop, won't stop eating these bars, so you're just gonna really? have to keep listening to You don't, you don't look to me as though you've got like a mad load of protein, either that or you're either not eating the bars or you're not making use of them, in which case like, you're, you're just raising the risk for kidney disease. Like one of the fastest growing illnesses in the West because of all the protein we're putting in unnecessarily. To me, wax poetic about them, they're just, so good. Are they really so good? Let's have a look. Let's see what's so good about them. Okay, ingredients. Whey protein. So baby baby cow growth formula. Only bodybuilders need to be messing with, with stuff like this. And even then, like from an animal pro you know, from an animal, this, this stuff is gonna be particularly harmful. It's got gelatin in there, which is the only protein in the food chain that's incomplete. It lacks tryptophan. So people say like vegan foods have incomplete proteins. No vegan foods are incomplete proteins, not whole foods, but gelatin is incomplete. Uh, dark chocolate, chocolate liquor. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but they don't sound good. Sugar, the second highest dietary cause of Alzheimer's disease, which is the top killer of people in my country currently. So, you know, thanks for promoting that. Cocoa butter, so these uh, long chain fatty acids that they again promote Alzheimer's, heart disease, stroke, additives, 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 and more sugar, more additives. This is not a health food. I don't know why a dietitian is promoting it. Only protein bars I've ever tried that actually tastes really good. And well, no wonder they got all sugar and crap and in them. And of course, they're loaded with protein. So. What, what, why? When I, when I write a nutrition plan, well, I'm, I'm no longer working as a nutritionist, I'm a YouTuber full time. When I ever wrote a plan for someone, as a vegan eating predominantly whole foods, I would get them twice the RDA of protein without even trying. So why you need to put this crap in on top of that, I really don't know. And this is a horrible message with no caveat. I think it's disgusting. Oh, today's flavor for my testing pleasure is salted caramel. Salted caramel. So free sugar, second biggest cause of Alzheimer's disease, dietarily speaking. The biggest dietary cause of Alzheimer's disease, salt. So there's salt and sugar in there and saturates. Hello, Alzheimer's disease. No wonder it's growing. Today's a salted caramel day. Go, 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 Bilt Bar, go, Bilt Bar. You're salty, you're sweet, you're so good to eat. And full of cruelty. You are paying people to shoot calves in the head. Little baby cows. You're paying people to shoot babies in the head so you can do your little uh, joy, joy dance. Sickening. Get a vegan bar at least. At least there's no cruelty involved in that. And they are lower sugar bars. I'll tell you what's a real lower sugar protein source. Beans, it's got no sugar in it. 
that's healthy for you. Oats or toast to get that protein carb ratio in. Personally, I love them before bed as like a bedtime snack and I warm them up in the microwave for like 10 seconds. Put a little ice cream on top, so, so good. Ice cream. Is she a dietitian or a junk food advocate? Don't get it. But if you want to give them a try, check out my link in the description. I do get it. I think what she's probably doing is saying, oh, uh, yeah, you got some bad habits. Don't worry, eat, eat some of that junk. Like, eat, just eat a moderate amount, but eat mostly like healthier foods. Well, what she calls healthy, unfortunately, most of that, a lot of that is animal products, which is the opposite of healthy. And um, people like to hear good news about their bad habits. So maybe that's why she's got a lot more followers than I have. And use my... Uh, no, that's not sour grapes on my behalf. <laughs> promo code AbbySharp15 to get 15% off of your order. My millennial friends likely know Travis Barker from the 90s, 2000s rock band, Blink-182. You know, say it ain't so, I will not go. Turn the lights off, carry me, na 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 okay. na 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 Okay, I'll move it. That was fun. Anyways, what I didn't know <laughs> was that this guy is such a badass that he escaped a terrifying plane crash in 2008. And as of January, he's also dating Kourtney Kardashian. So my Gen Zers probably know wow. about that. But anyway, the guy now lives in LA and in typical LA fashion is really into wellness culture. He's also vegan FYI. So let's take a look at what he eats in a day. I love coffee, I love matcha. Also, another favorite thing to do is put a rice tincture from Barker Wellness in those drinks. I like my coffee black. I'll either drink espressos or a vanilla latte with oat milk. As far as my matcha, I love it with oat or coconut milk. I'll add a little bit of maple syrup, sometimes a shot of espresso if I'm really tired. In case you are wondering what this whole tincture is, as the name might imply, Travis's self-branded vegan line of herbal infused THC free broad spectrum CBD product. Why well, would that not be vegan? Crush some animals and stick them in there for no reason? You'd probably do it too. Now, I'm not an expert on CBD products as it's currently outside the scope of registered dietitians to advise on this, though dietitians are lobbying for this to change. So who knows? Maybe I'll become an expert soon. I love but it. Get it, it down here. Yeah. Like if you're going to get it, use Honest Temp. Link below 30% off code HENCBD30. Her's <laughs> Rise product is a mixture of CBD, CGB, which is another cannabinoid, and coffee arabica seed oil, which is described as a natural source of energy. But anyways, like you said, you do your coffee routine your way, and it makes sense that this guy wants to, of course, plug his new brand. Let's a bit like you with your built bars, which are horrible. Let's take a look at breakfast. If I'm going to eat breakfast, my favorite breakfast in the world is chicken and waffles from Crossroads. It's vegan, it's delicious. That does look delicious. Chicken and waffles is one of my all time favorite brunch meals. So I am intrigued by the vegan take. Now, obviously not every meal needs to be super well balanced. And let's be real. A breakfast made up of waffles and any kind of fried food isn't designed to be the most nutrient dense option, even if it is vegan. And well, at least we can agree on one thing. That's nice. 100% okay. I actually kind of appreciate it when I see ethical vegans choose fun foods because I think it's an important reminder for folks with dietary restrictions that plant-based foods can also be emotionally satisfying and shouldn't necessarily trigger scarcity mentality. My In that case, why have you not gone vegan, Abby? Because you were citing like, oh no, it's, it's restrictive, so I can't go vegan, orthorexia, blah de blah. But now you're saying like it's absolutely fine and you've got all those like <laughs> like emotionally satisfying foods. So now what's your excuse for not being vegan? You just shot yourself in the foot. My favorite meal to cook would be the impossible sausage patties. Mix that with the folly heart egg, an English muffin, maybe some fruit on the side. Okay, so this on the other hand ticks both boxes for me pretty well, which is an inherently balanced meal that also feels really fun and delish. So we've got protein and fat in the vegan sausages and egg, plus carbs and fiber in the English muffin and fruit. Now, 
What I saw as a nutritionist is a load of processed junk plus some free. I don't know why you're saying this is good. I get asked a lot about whether or not I think these faux vegan products are actually healthy. And my no. answer is, well, honestly, it depends how you define healthy. Well, does it like speed the, your, the time it takes to get to your grave or less in it? Like, it's not a hard question, is so it? Let's talk about the impossible food. What's wrong with this person? First. If you look at all of the ingredients, it's largely made up of water, soy protein, sunflower oil, and coconut oil, with some small amounts of some stabilizers and flavors in there. If we were to compare this patty to a similar sized McDonald's sausage patty, you'd be looking at almost half the calories in the vegan version with significantly less saturated fat and a comparable amount of sodium and protein. But calories aren't everything. And I do know that a lot of people may worry about the ingredients in these faux meat products, namely the addition of sunflower oil. Now, how concerning sunflower oil not the coconut oil with the long and very long chain triglycerides that actually cause heart disease. It's actually worse than beef fat. You're missing that bit out. Are you actually qualified? Oil is really comes down to how much of it you consume. I'm, I'm just a nutritionist. I'm not even a dietitian, and even I know that. Your overall diet and also what type of sunflower oil we're even talking about. Some varieties are higher in monounsaturated fats, while others, which are more common, tend to be higher in omega-6 polyunsaturated fats. And it's known that polyunsaturated fats consumed in excess may have some pro-inflammatory effects in the body. Well, not all of them. Like, what about omega-3? Like, you still don't seem to understand what polyunsaturated fats are. And why are you not focusing on the important thing, like the long and very long chain triglyceride saturates? Come on. No, I can't believe you. No, I can't believe it. But the bigger concern is not just omega-6s in isolation, but rather the omega-3 to 6 ratio of your overall diet. So it's ideal to consume enough omega-3s in your diet to balance out your intake of those omega-6s. And my take on this is that if you're consuming a varied diet and enjoying these processed foods in moderation, along with more unprocessed plant-based options like beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds, particularly those that are rich in omega-3 fats like walnuts, flax, hemp, and chia, it's not really something we need to worry about. I would not say that walnuts and uh, hemp hearts are great sources of omega-3. I mean, omega-3 is in there, but that's skewed in favor of omega-6. So I'd really say if you're eating other like nuts and seeds high in omega-6, it's really ground flax, ground chia, sacha inchi seeds that you should be emphasizing because these are three or four to one in favor of omega-3 so i'd say it's those like balanced with the other ones of course walnuts and hemp can be in there but i wouldn't promote those as great sources if people are trying to balance that three and six they may just put like walnuts and hemp in and then a bit of the other nuts and seeds miss out the flax chia sacha inchi and have a horrible six to three ratio so i think that was bad advice as for the egg the faux egg contains more than twice the calories for a comparable volume with the real egg, but it also has twice the protein and it also has no saturated fat. The faux egg does- Oh, so you do admit that saturated fat's a problem. So why, why do you eat tons of animal products then? It does contain some gums or stabilizers like cellulose or carrageenan, which I think are fine in moderation, but these can be triggering for some folks with digestive issues. So again, which one of these foods are healthier really depends on your unique goals and triggers. And ultimately, I'm just really glad that we have options like this for folks with dietary restrictions who still want to enjoy a lot. What about folks who don't want to murder animals unnecessarily? And how about you jump on that uh, train as well? A variety of food experiences and meals. The Air One, I love their meatless beef and broccoli. I usually have that with like a side of green beans or broccoli or rice or Brussels sprouts. That cracks, that's one of my favorite. And then I love their turmeric smoothie. I will just mention that I'm going to assume all three of the meals that he's mentioned so far utilize processed soy-based protein, which again, totally fine in moderation, but I do like to see more variety whenever we can. So sneaking in some beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, hemp, quinoa, etc., will help ensure he's getting a nice variety of amino acids, as well as some less processed options as well. 
he's already getting a nice variety of amino acids, but yeah, eat some real food. Yeah, that's a, that's a good bit of advice, Abby. Also, I feel like turmeric lattes were really 2019. So, I don't know, are turmeric smoothies the upgraded 2021 version? Please, Gen Zers, give me the facts here. Update me. So Travis's version contains beet juice, carrot juice, orange juice, turmeric, obviously, plus camu camu, which is a sour berry rich in vitamin C. Now, I don't know about specific quantities in this smoothie, but what we do know is that only 50 grams of camu camu berries provides 16 times your daily requirement for vitamin C. And even without the addition of the camu camu, we're already getting plenty of vitamin C from the orange. You don't need to limit your natural like vitamin C, like the more the better. That RDA is a minimum, like probably so you don't get scurvy or whatever. Like why do you just want to scrape in there with the minimum amount not to get a disease? Surely you want like an optimal amount. Like vitamin C is like so protective. Like what's your problem? Carrot and beet Weird. in the smoothie, plus the broccoli or Brussels sprouts or veggies from his meal. In fact, just a single cup of orange juice alone provides twice your needs of vitamin C for the day. I mean, it's always so great to focus on getting enough vitamin C if you're a vegetarian or vegan. I'll tell you what you should be worrying about is all the free sugar, like which gives us Alzheimer's disease. Why are you not focusing on that? Vegan specifically to help improve the absorption Weird. of that non-heme iron. But in Travis's case, the Camu Camu is probably just a little bougie overkill. But hey, if he likes the taste, or if he just likes saying the name like I do, like Camu Camu, sounds like a cute little pet name. Um, and also I honestly just assume he can afford the luxurious upgrade, then hey, I say. How about some useful like dietary advice that's gonna help people? Why not? What the that's hell is the LA this? way I guess. I try my best to avoid gluten. It doesn't make me feel the best. Unless you have celiac or diagnosed non-celiac gluten intolerance, a gluten-free diet is probably actually less healthy for you. Well, that depends what you mean by a gluten-free diet. Your version is gonna be full of junk food crap. So yeah, I get it from your perspective. From my perspective though, a gluten-free whole foods plant-based diet, like it's just gonna be full of whole plant foods. So what's the problem there? So again, like, I think you're not looking at the, the bigger picture. I think you're not concentrating on the important things here. Like you just seem to be fine with so much junk food, like crap, like it's bizarre. It's bizarre to me. A lot of gluten-free foods are lower in fiber, higher in additives, not my ones, stabilizers, and are ultimately more refined. And since Travis is also vegan, if he's going to also eliminate a lot of beneficial grains, I would just want to be on the lookout to ensure he's meeting his needs for things like vitamin B12 and iron. So when looking for- B12 doesn't come from like, Wheat, <laughs> like, this is, this whole video is stupid. Yes, I love snacks throughout the day. Probably my favorite bar is a bar called Get Mine Right. Their peanut butter bar is amazing. I also like almonds, nuts, pistachios, bananas nice. with almond butter, or sometimes an avocado smoothie with dates and plant-based protein. Lots of great snack ideas here. More protein again, like does he, does he need it? Now I also looked up the Get Mind Right peanut butter bar, which he mentioned, which seems to follow theme with Travis's appreciation for functional nutrition. Nutrition wise, I love that the bar has an impressive 11 grams of protein and seven grams of fiber with only four grams of added sugar. Plus it's got lots of healthy fats in there since peanuts are the first ingredient on the ingredient list. But what makes this bar unique is its happy brain blend, which combines MCT oil, adaptogens, and nootropics like ashwagandha, mushrooms, and ginseng. Now, admittedly, the- MCT oil raises your risk for heart disease, our number one killer in the West. Not as bad as the long and very long chain triglycerides, but it raises it. Why, why do you think that's a good thing to be eating? Again, it's just processed junk. There is some promising research that ashwagandha may help to reduce stress, which we'll discuss later on. As for the MCT oil, research suggests that it may improve brain function, particularly in individuals with epilepsy, Alzheimer's, and autism. Side effects may include death. After a workout, I like to make a protein shake. It usually has 
plant-based protein powder, a banana, some type of milk, either almond, coconut milk, flaxseed oil, flaxseed, cinnamon, dates. That's pretty much like my go-to. And then I'll put the recovery tincture from Barker on this end as well. All right, so as a post-workout smoothie, this does look pretty good for a recreational gym warrior. So we've got protein in the protein powder for muscle protein synthesis, fast-acting carbs in the banana and dates to help replenish the glycogen, plus some healthy fats and fiber in the flax. Now, depending on how much flax oil is in there, I would say that hardcore fitness enthusiasts might say that the flax oil plus the flax seeds might be overkill for post-workout. I mean, some folks find that too much fat after workout slows down their recovery, but I'm also just gonna assume that he's not like dumping it in. So it's probably okay. Now, Travis also of course has to plug his tincture again. This one, like his morning blend, also contains CBD and CGB. However, this blend is unique in that it also contains ashwagandha extract for alleged stress reduction. My understanding of the science is that ashwagandha does work very well for uh, stress reduction. However, it's fleeting. It works for a time and then stops working. So you really need to cycle off and on it. I'll tell you what I would have focused on there. If he's banging in like tons of flax seeds along, along with the flax oil, when you grind these up, and they need to be ground for you to get any of the omega-3, if you grind them up in the presence of fluid, it creates cyanide. And actually you should limit, you should limit flax seeds. So NutritionFacts.org recommends no more than one tablespoon per day. Um, and so I would have been promoting like chia seeds, Satcha Inchi, like some of these seeds rather than just the flax seeds. My typical dinner, is Matsuisa or Nobu vegan sushi. I also really love all the gluten-free vegan pasta options at Crossroads Kitchen. I'm more than likely ordering the bolognese or the pizza, also calamari, Caesar salad, or artichoke oysters, or some of my favorites. I really do appreciate creativity in the kitchen. And when a chef is finding fun ways to make vegan calamari and oysters look and taste like real seafood, yeah. I gotta give them major props. I actually love desserts. One of my favorite desserts is the Sunday from Crossroads Kitchen. Another one of my favorites is the shaved ice from Matsuhisa. I also love, love, love the coconut sorbet from Nobu and Matsuhisa. Do you know the last dessert I ate at a restaurant? It was uh, chunks of watermelon and chunks of, I think, garlia melon. It was delicious. So sugary, sweet, refreshing, and won't give you diabetes and cancer and heart disease. I don't know why Abby keeps going on about mindsets of restriction and restrictive diets, this and that. The first two years of my veganism, I ate 500 different whole plant foods, discovered loads of new things, like learned how to cook, added all the herbs and spices, and I think it's just a really convoluted excuse not to stop hurting animals unnecessarily. Oh man, yes to all of the above. I mean, dinner for me is just not quite complete at a restaurant without ice cream for dessert. And I'm loving all of these vegan options. But Saturated fat and sugar. Like, yeah, get it in ya. What horrible advice. The last thing I usually put in my body before I go to sleep is the Barker Wellness Sleep Tincture. It allows me to have a full night's rest. I wake up feeling refreshed. It's a game changer. Another tincture. Anyways, Travis finishes the night with another CBD product. And this one for sleep, fittingly also contains melatonin and valerian root extract. So super quickly, melatonin is the sleep hormone that our bodies naturally produce to control our sleep wake cycle. It only controls the timing of when we fall asleep. It's nothing to do with being awake. Research suggests that supplementing does have some benefits for folks struggling with sleep. It also messes up your sex hormones. So for instance, um, I think it's often given to children with autism um, and it can mess up like the amount of time it takes them to reach sexual maturity, for instance. Uh, from my understanding of the science, it's not something to, to really mess with. The only time I personally would use that is if I was changing time zones and I'd use it, you know, just sparingly just to help transition.
One small study showed that when supplementing with melatonin two hours before bed, individuals with insomnia were able to fall asleep faster and enjoy a better quality sleep. If you want to do this without messing up your sex hormones, <laughs> I would just take uh, L-theanine, the compound out of green tea, or take like a larger dose of that. So what are my overall thoughts on Travis Barker's diet? Well, I would say we've had a good fair game of wellness culture BS bingo, haven't we? Bingo! I would say like he's eating a ton of junk food and I'd really be speaking to that and like encourage him to emphasize more of the whole foods he was eating personally. I mean. Rather than concentrating on some irrelevant old crap. What I do really appreciate is that despite his dietary restrictions, his intention with his diet seems to be in a good place. He's still allowing himself a wide range of higher fat, higher carb comfort foods. So his diet is not lacking in the fun factor. My healthy whole foods diet is not lacking in the fun factor. I eat different cuisines from all over the world. It's freaking delicious, but I'm not killing myself at the same time. Like how about some of this sort of in, in your programming? Like how about speaking to that occasionally? More calories and I'm not- It was like at least 50% junk food. Like what, what? Come on. Hearing a lot of moralizing language around food. Now from a nutrition perspective, I think that Travis seems to be getting enough fiber, fat, carbs, and protein. My only suggestion would be to try to switch up the source of protein whenever he can. So rather than relying on ultra processed soy meats and powders all the time, I would encourage trying to work in more whole food sources of protein like beans, lentils, hemp, nuts, and seeds. Amen. But to be honest, if you're just eating a healthy whole foods plant-based diet, like the, the protein's going to go after itself. It's not... It's not an issue. You, you don't have, you don't even need to think of things as protein foods. Like even fruit is like five percent protein on average by way of calories. So just eat the healthy range of whole vegan plant foods. And on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you again to Built Bar for sponsoring this video. If you thanks for your money, Built Bar. Now click this.